Hi guys, it's Peter, and just want to say uh, thank you for all of the, the recent feedback that uh, we've had. And uh, yeah, obviously, last message created a, a few little um, uh, responses that we've uh, had a chance to, to, to go through and look at. And one thing I want to talk about this week is a subject that I think affects absolutely everybody. And to various degrees, if you, if you know how to uh, have access to some of the insights that I'm going to be sharing with you on this subject, it can make a profound and, and usually instantaneous shift in the quality of life that you have on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is the issue of stress. Okay, hands up who feels stressed some of the time? All right, you know, both hands, right? And the, the, the challenge is that we live in a world that is so stressful compared to any other time in history on many different levels, which is a shame because, by contrast, we live at a time in history that has more certainty around things like survival and longevity than any other time in human history. So how come is it that we are more stressed out today than almost any time in our past or our ancestors' past? And it's something to, to really contemplate because if you understand where most modern stress comes from, now, if you've gone back you know, 20,000 years and said to your ancestors that, you know, I'm really stressed because, you know, I haven't got enough time in the day, that they'd look at you sort of quizzically and say, well, you mean you haven't got enough time to, to run away from a saber-toothed tiger? No, 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 I just don't have enough time to get to work. All right? it, it would be a very interesting sort of con conversation from their side. So modern day stress is something that we, I really want to look at here because that there's something, and we, we may get a little deep here in this conversation, so for some of you it may be uh, a, a perfect explanation. For some of you, you may want to rewatch this a couple of times and, and, and tune in uh, and see if it resonates. And if not, no big deal, that, that's fine. But one has to understand a certain fact, and that is that modern day stress is caused not in uh, that has anything to do with circumstances that we usually attribute to it, but in our inner reaction to circumstances. Now, that's, that's a fairly obvious statement when you look at it, but let's just delve a little deeper. You see, our experience of the world is an internally created phenomenon. And I don't want to get too deep into to quantum physics and advanced theoretical physics here, which you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to do with some of you offline. But you know, most of the time, our perception of what the world is is very different from uh, everybody else's perception of what the world is. We each create our own what we call layer of the world or experience of the world, but it's an internally created phenomenon. We call it the physical world because we interpret everything in our outer world through our five physical senses. Now, what are our five physical senses? Obviously, taste, touch, sight, sound, and smell. We know that. Yeah, let's just leave the, the, the physical senses as five for now without getting into deeper conversations. But yeah, if we understand that everything in our outer world, everything in our experience of what we would call three-dimensional reality, yeah, or our day-to-day -day life, our, our story, our, the, the stuff of our life, the external experience of, of waking up to, to going to bed, Everything in that experience is first filtered through one of those five senses. Now, we can't experience anything else. You're not experiencing my voice now, the computer screen or the TV that you're looking at, the, the seat that you're sitting in, yeah, the, 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 the temperature that you're currently uh, experiencing. None of that can enter your awareness unless it is first filtered through one of the five senses. Right? Now, let me ask you a question. How many of us all like the same music? Hmm, we've got a variable. How many of us all like the same food? Oh my goodness, another variable. How about we all have the same favorite color? I don't think so. Now, what about the same you know, uh, sense about what we like to smell? Well, no, that's why there's so many different you know, perfumes and aftershaves and, and you know, scented shampoos, because we have a different sense even about what we like to smell. And you know, what we like to touch is, you know, uh, is completely variable. So. Hang on a minute, let me just rewind and check in. So what you're saying here, Peter, is that you know, we all experience the world through our five senses, but each one of those five senses can be completely different to the person standing next to us. Well, yes, of course. In fact, you know, it's not only likely, it's guaranteed. You know, so two people can experience the exact same event, standing next to each other, breathing the same air in the same space and time, use the same equipment to process that experience called the five senses and come up with an entirely different conclusion. Hmm, am I making sense? 
See, the message I'm giving here, guys, is that the, the conclusion that you draw has very little to do with the actual external event itself. It has everything to do with how you manage your internal data processing. And the people that seem the less stressed are the ones that have a handle on how to manage that data processing better than somebody who doesn't. So if you're just reacting to social conditions, to your upbringing, to belief systems you haven't questioned for a while, if you're just reacting because, you know, uh, to, to, to peer pressure or you're reacting to, to fears and patterns that you're running that you're unconsciously unaware of, as most of us are, then your default mechanism of processing that data that comes through is not going to be leading you towards the most empowered or positive conclusion. And as a result, we get stressed. Yeah, because the outer world doesn't fit our pictures. Well, guess what? I'm going to ask you a question here and be honest with yourself. Who is it that voted on what those outer pictures should look like in order for us to be happy and fulfilled or not? Sit with that for a second. Let me ask it again. Who was it that voted on what those pictures should look like for you in terms of what has to happen for you to be happy or fulfilled? Because as human beings, we are cybernetic organisms, which means we are pre-programmed to be programmed. Yeah, we don't get a chance or, or, or get to choose how we're going to, uh, sorry, we don't get a chance to choose if or not we're going to be programmed. We are creatures of habit. Now, unfortunately, we do very little out of reason. We do a lot out of passion, but most of what we do is out of habit. So our habits are formed usually unconsciously and usually because of the exterior programming that we get to, to sit through that we are not guarded or filtered through because we don't see the damage that it does long term or we don't see what activity goes on behind the initial uh, experience uh, and the ganglia that form in the brain and, and the, the different levels of patterning that happens for us to then become uh, a creature of a formed habit that will then act on almost autopilot. Just like driving to work uh, and you, you end up at work on your day off because you were daydreaming while you were driving and you end up saying, oh my goodness, I've, I've turned left instead of right out of habit. Uh, and that's with yeah, a thousand other crazy people on the road and it still keeps you alive. <laughs> yeah, habits are powerful things. So uh, from, from my perspective, if you are able to understand that you get to choose the meaning of what happens, you get to take responsibility for your data processing of the five senses. You know, two men sat behind prison bars. One saw mud, the other saw stars. The condition is identical in both scenarios. How one chooses to interpret that condition determines whether or not you go off on a track towards empowerment or whether you go off on a track that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of more stress and resentment with your current life condition. You know, if you've ever had a relationship with somebody or an intimate relationship where, for example, they left you, that same scenario, two different ways of looking at it. One, you can turn and say, well, I'm clearly no good, so they left me. Or you can say, well, thank God they went, so they made room for somebody who's right. Next! Now, just stay with that example for a second. You suddenly go out, and you know, uh, a year later, six months down the line, whatever it is, if I'm on the first scenario, I'm no good, so they left me, and that's my belief. That's all it is. It has nothing to do with the actual event. The event is the event. But if I'm processing my data management through the filter or the belief or, or the choice of I'm no good so they left me because that's my story, that's you know, my upbringing, that's my social conditioning, that's my parents, that's my fill in the blank. Yeah, we all have a story, my friends. Yeah. Then the next time I go to meet somebody or I'm introduced to somebody, what are my default thoughts? Oh, I, I wonder if this person thinks I'm good enough. Now, if that's your starting place, I can predict what's going to happen over the next two dates, if you get to date number two, that is. <laughs> Whereas if you turn around at the, you know, if we rewind six months before and you say, next, uh, yeah, thank goodness that person went, so they made room for somebody who's right. And that is your default level of processing, because it's a choice. Then next time you meet somebody, what is your, your, your default level of being able to interact? Right? Well, yeah, I wonder if this person's going to be fortunate enough to spend some time with me. And as long as it comes from a place of authenticity, not arrogance, yeah, because you're feeling empowered, not disempowered, yeah, your second date's going to be a very different experience. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, we create our interpretation of meaning of the world irrespective of the external circumstances. And I could give thousands of examples we don't have time to right now. But my message this week is this. Check in. What is it that stresses you? Because all stress comes from 
the, the data processing of what we perceive to be things in our outer world not fitting the pictures that we designed in the inner world that they should look like. Well, guess what? Uh, I, I gave up fighting reality a long time ago because I found it so much easier to adjust my, my meaning of what happens rather than try and grab hold of the world by its throat and try and adjust it to make it fit the pictures of what I think should be happening. Guys, that's exhausting. I did it for many years. Uh, and it's a way that leads into way more stress on a self-fulfilling you know, prophecy than taking a, you know, a, a, a chillaxing moment and say, you know something? Let me ask myself a really honest question. What's wrong with this moment right now? Hmm. Think about it. Or don't think about it. What's wrong with this moment right now? And then you'll start to get in touch with the fact that there's probably more to be grateful for right now in your life than there is to be stressed about. And you know, we get to choose which part of that, you know, that, that scene to focus on. And I'm not saying that you know, things in your life aren't important. I'm not saying that things in your life don't matter. What I'm saying here is that the level of importance that we place on things is usually down or controlled to mismanaged imagination based upon expectations that are unrealistic, based upon a, a disassociation from what we can appreciate. And if you start to unhook and just lower the importance of what we think should happen or shouldn't happen in the outer world, we'll start getting in touch with the fact that where we live, which is the inner world, is the originator of the outer world. In other words, your outer world follows your inner world. If you've got chaos and stress in your perceived outer world right now, check your thinking. And again, I don't want to go too deep into this. You know, I've, I've just completed my master's uh, seminar I do once a year in, in Dubai. And I spend an entire week with a, with a small group of people where we go really deep into understanding some of the physical and metaphysical aspects of how to create the reality you want in a way that banishes stress for life, takes care of, of, of money worries for the rest of your life, takes care of, of many different aspects of, of, of how most people, unfortunately, fall into the trap of stress. That's not something we have time to go into here, but I just want to give you the insight, the, the nugget, the, the focus of being able to ask yourself better questions. The question is, you know, what's wrong with this moment right now? And who made the event mean what it is that it means, other than me? Other than me. You know, you, 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 you're driving to work and it's raining. You can get upset or you can celebrate the fact that the ducks love it. You can celebrate the fact that the plants are happy. You know, don't try and control what you can't control. Could you control the traffic? Of course not. So why the hell get upset about it? Yeah, make it a game to see how many motorists around you you can make smile who are having a bad day because they don't know how to take charge of their thinking. Turn it into a game. Collect five smiles before the office. You're still going to get to the office at the same time as you would, but the only difference is am I going to walk in in a better mood or a worse mood? Your choice based on how you process that data. Now, the other aspect to that, if we just rewind for a second, understand that everybody creates their reality through those five senses, and every single one can be different for everybody else. What does that do for tolerance? What does that do for making you feel that you have to have agreement from somebody that your model of the world is right? Give up the game. Seven billion people on this planet, and guess what? Seven different versions of what this world yeah, should look like according to them. Yeah? <laughs> Yeah, get over the fact that you know, if you're using the equipment called the five senses to process your world and you come up with your conclusion, it is, of course, going to be different from everybody else's, even the person sitting next to you. Yeah, and we all filter it through our own story, beliefs, upbringing, cultural differences, yeah, mood that we're in at the time, uh, and yeah, ad infinitum. So as a result of that, yeah, what are you going to do today that allows you to recognize that where you thought you were stressed, Lower the importance, appreciate or find something to appreciate, concentrate on what you can do to put a smile on somebody else's face, because uh, another little sub-bonus here is that majority of stress, if not 99%, you know, is usually caused by us focusing on ourselves too much. Now that's, you know, I'll give you that one for free. And understand that you, know, you don't need agreement from somebody else for you to feel right. It's your five senses, it's your way to manage that data, it's your way of creating your experience of the world. And nobody but nobody has the right to tell you it's wrong. Nobody but nobody has the right to try and get you to convert to their way of thinking. And guess what? Vice versa. So enjoy your current reality. 
yeah, lower the stress, enjoy life, guys. It, you know, as far as we're aware, we only get to remember this time around, yeah, once. And you know, I wish you an outstanding and, and hopefully a little less stressed week. Um, chill out, go put a smile on somebody's face, and I'll speak to you soon.